lacrosse on BEC TV. The first telecast of the year for the Jaguars as the boys take on Chaska. Quickly down to Joe Mavison, the starting lineups in our national anthem here at Jefferson High School. Number 37. All right, so we're having our, some technical difficulties with our house uh, mic, possibly due to some wind here that we'll talk about as uh, this game goes on. Josh Powers, glad to be joined by Rob Graff. Rob, great to see you. Glad you and the family are doing well. Uh, Jefferson, two games in, one and one so far this year. What, what do we know about the Jaguars? I think what we know is that they are a, a team of extremes, young talent as well as very, very effective older talent. So I think it's going to be really interesting to see how those, um, those ages continue to blend as the year progresses. They had a really strong um, performance against Cheska Chan. Um, could have easily won that game. Then um, had a, had a late-minute realizing that they were strong, came back and beat Burnsville after betrailing. So um, I think the verdict's out, and they're still really, they're not going to hit their stride for a good half the season. All right, let's send it down to the national anthem. Beautiful day here, Rob. Uh, low 60s right now, better than the last couple of days temperature-wise, <laughs> but wind is going to be something that both these teams are going to have to deal with. That wind is coming from behind us, so as you're looking at the screen, that wind is kind of a crosswind from the bottom of your screen toward the top of the screen, pretty gusty at times. I think what we're really going to see that impact is not during normal six-on-six -six offense or defense, but where we'll see it is if either one of the teams is going to employ a ride, if you will, a forecheck that forces overpasses, meaning side of the field to the other side of the field. Those on this field especially um, are really difficult on windy days because the wind will literally catch it and move it. And that, that's something that the defensemen will have a hard time especially if it's coming from our side to where the benches are because then you not only have the wind but you have the sun and and that's you'll see a couple times most likely some of the jefferson guys if they are relatively close to each other they will roll the ball if the ball is going from this side to that chaska 0 and one on the year the tough opener against a very good shock team 22 to one it did not go well for chaska but for jefferson rob up front, a couple of key guys to watch. Uh, Cody Rinquist, number 12 for Jefferson, and Aiden Ress, a bandit, number six, part of that uh, six-man offensive unit that's going to hopefully generate some Jaguar goals. Uh, Cody is leading the team in goals and has done a really strong job creating offense. Um, and Aiden has been that really QB attackman that gets everything settled down, gets everyone in the right place. We'd really like to see Aiden um, find his uh, opportunities to score because he has a great shot, a great dodge. We'll see that today. And again, these uh, teams have really not played for two years. It's kind of one of those uh, not maybe talked about enough things, but 
the teams around the state trying to figure out exactly what they have. Uh, Rob, you mentioned before the game, even experienced guys like seniors, they were only sophomores back when lacrosse oh. was last played as you get a goal here from Chaska. Remember, they only scored once all game against Shakopee, and they've done that already. Caden Attenberry on uh, maybe uh, a goal there for him that uh, Jefferson's goaltender Jake McCarthy would like to have back. Well, I, I've watched Jake for years, and, and I saw him play the uh, Chanhassen game as well as the Burnsville game, and I, I can promise you that that's a goal that will never happen. And one of the nice things about being a senior goaltender, he'll forget that. He'll let that go and get the next one. You know, he, he really believes that that mantra of the next goal matters, the next shot matters, and, and I think he'll be very focused on that. So Caden Attenberry, the sophomore for Chaska, getting the Hawks to their first lead of the season. We're just going to talk about Jake being one of the best goaltenders in the Metro. Hopefully he can pro pro provide some saves yeah. uh, in this game that will uh, accentuate that point because he has been outstanding for Jefferson. He really has. Holding a team like Chan Hassan, which is a top 10 team, to six goals, um, is is something that he did with the help of the defense, and I would expect that to continue. Uh, I'd also keep your eye on number eight, Nolan Cobb. Nolan's a senior captain, um, and and has done a really good job at finding the opponent's strongest attacker and and really doing a good job denying that attacker opportunities to either pass or shoot. Um, so I, I think he's been a, a real aid to the, the Jefferson defense. And that's their identity right now is their team defense. Um, I think that's really important. Um, and I think they realize that. So I think when you see the ball on offense, you're going to see a very controlled attack, um, one that takes time, and that's the defense right. Yeah, you'll see on this goal that Jake has it lined up, and it literally just snicks off his plastic. He's pro So, you know. That that's going to happen once, and that's it. Clearly, five is strong, but th that's the type of play that that's going to really hurt a team. You know, there was a really nice initiation by Attenberry, um, trying to move it on one, reading the slide, and not being able to com complete that. And that's you going back to J where you were before, Josh, on that problem with not playing for a season. Is that's an easy pass? if you've been playing all the time, and not everyone has. Wow, great check there by Chaska. And a ground ball picked up by the Hawks, so Jefferson yet to go on an offensive possession here, two minutes and change in as the Hawks will set things up again. Andrew Lund, 41 with it right now. And it does seem like Attenberry is their key guy at the top of the offensive zone. Is another bad pass. Jefferson a chance to scoop this one up, and they do. That's Gordy Gombald. A hockey guy, also a defenseman, or he was a forward, excuse me, for Jefferson. Back on D here as you get, they get it to Cody Rinquist, number 12, moving it in for the Jaguars. Another senior hockey player and Parker Boom uh, playing a little attack. But I do want to return to your point about, like, who's playing right now and how much varsity experience they have. There's not a lot because guys that were playing, there you go. Oh, a great bounce right over for the goal for Parker Boone. So the, that bounce certainly favored Jefferson, but give Parker credit, he was in the right spot and made it happen. Yeah, I, 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 I keep coming back to uh, this point and the game is not letting us talk about <laughs> it, which is fine. Um, the, we'll guys who are, the guys who are seniors and juniors right now, the last time they played lacrosse, so you're gonna see Cody with a nice wing dodge, a nice little check. And then Parker very alertly, if you will, like the cuts through to bring his man behind. There's a loose ball, very alert, and then gets it not on cage, but where the goalie isn't. And that's a real key for Parker. That's something he's been really working on. Um, but the guys that are participating who are, we believe are the leaders of all the teams, not just Jefferson, but Chaska right. and Shaka, they were sophomores and freshmen the last time this game was played. And that losing that year of Minnesota Varsity High School, even if they played over the summer, is a big deal. It's a really big deal. Uh, Minnesota High School ball is, is improving every year. We're sending tons of players uh, to the NCAA. And, and losing that year is really impacting all programs. 
I spoke to one well-known coach, and he says the coaches that can get their players to play settled offense and defense within concept are the teams that will do well early. Meaning don't push things too aggressively. Right, no hero ball. Play within the scheme. Take advantage of the spacing that you're doing. Make sure you are spaced. We saw that last week. We covered Kennedy and Burnsville, a team that here's a shot off the post and in. Pass McCarthy, it's Attenberry. Again, so Chaska retaking the lead. As I was making that point, we saw that last week in the uh, Burnsville-Kennedy game. Burnsville was just the more patient team, and it seemed to benefit them on offense. And meanwhile, Chaska's Attenberry really getting involved early. It would be interesting to watch um, the coaching staff of the Jags adjust to this, and that's because it's very clear Attenberry has a nice left-handed shot. They're putting him up on this wing. They're not clearing him through on the dodge. They're leaving him up there. So if we slide off of him and go towards that attack dodger, they're well-schooled. You know, Coach Friedbauer does a really nice job pushing the ball up high to a strong shooter. What I would expect to see that we'll see a lot of is that that slide will be late to go to the attackman for Jefferson, and they'll play out harder on Attenbury to deny him that what's called a step-down shot. So Jefferson trailing again, but with possession after that face-off. Kevin Graff, your son, number nine, Rob. He's only an eighth grader, but he's already scored this year. Another guy offensively to watch. Parker Boone! Looked like that one ricocheted off either the helmet of... Uh, the Chaska goaltender or the crossbar. I don't understand the call why it's going to Chaska. I, I, it looked like a shot to me. It was right, a shot, yeah. That's clearly a shot, and White's already behind the yeah, goal. It clearly went off the That's helmet. a missed call. The goaltender Brody Hill, by the way, a sophomore, number 50 for Chaska. Yeah, no other, I mean... He, even if he was trying to pass it from that close in, I don't that, know how you would that, distinguish yeah. that as not a shot there, but... Hey, look, the, the officials are back, you know, after being gone for a while, too, so we'll give them some break, but, yeah, I don't agree with that call. Chaska trying to benefit five minutes in. They have already scored more than they did against Shakopee. Nice takeaway. Good defense. That's one of the uh, sophomores, Owen Baker. Owen's, um, again, you know, the last time Jefferson was doing things actually i think he's a he's friend. a freshman he's yeah. a freshman that's right he was a seventh grader and I, just speaking of i know how much players mature from when they're 15 16 as sophomores to yeah. 17 18 as seniors that is huge not just mentally but physically yep here's a ground ball it'll roll into hawk territory they'll get it once you establish the ball on the offensive end in the box, the ball cannot be passed back. Nice job there. So That's couple. Nolan Cobb again. Oh, no. This one picked up, though. Marcus Walton moving in, and he scores. No, I think or it's outside. It, okay. No, it's outside. It is outside. It looked like it rippled the back of the net on the, on the side of the net. So Jefferson gets it back as you watch the replay. Is a shot by Watson just off target. That's one that he would like to have back. Loose ball. Who's going to get it? That has to be white ball. There you go. Good job. The Stone Pair Gordy did a Gombold. great. Yep, yeah, but Stone Pair did a great job of holding up the ball, keeping it on the ground till he could get help. That was a really nice two versus one ground ball. Stone Payer, he's the senior number 13. Yep. Hunter Payer is a freshman. We he's in on attack, left hand. There we go. I'm getting to know some of these younger Jaguars. Good mix of youth and experience offensively for Jefferson, and that's the challenge for Scott Caters, try to mold this offensive unit early in the season. Number 11 for the Jags is Milton Spears. Milton is an eighth grader. Good matchup. Behind the net. Hunter. Spin move. Goal. Washington to Hunter, and it is a goal. You called it, Rob. That was a nice pass by number three, Reese Washington, the sophomore. So you got really kids at every level. We saw your son as an eighth grader, freshman, sophomores. You got the senior 
Uh, Aiden Rathsabanda, Junior Cody Rinquist. It's a good mix for the Jaguars and a nice combination here. Now, what's really nice about this is Hunter does a great job of cutting through and taking the defender out right here. He ignores the contact, stays live, meaning stays away from the defenders, catches and finishes quickly to the far side. Now, Hunter's a strong box player, and, and he finishes the ball really, really well, finishing meaning when you're within that five yards. If we get the ball there with your hands free, you should put the ball in the net, and he does a great job of it. Correction, my apologies there in the chest. Goaltender Connor Selkin, he's a junior captain, number two. Apologies for that, but that one getting not much Selkin could do from that uh, distance. But Jefferson does tie it now at two apiece, as you see getting to the late stages here in the first quarter. Four quarters here in lacrosse, 12 minutes each. So we get a timeout. I think, I think what we're seeing right now is a very... Um, a team for Chaska that's, you know, really working hard, really realizing they, they are um, a team that's a, a blue-collar team that needs to work for every goal. They've ridden really well. They've always had, with one exception, where Stone held the ball down, uh, two guys to the ground balls. They realize that, that that's their bread and butter, I think, is to win those extra possessions with hustle, and I think that's what they're really trying to do. I know you know the, the coaching staff for Chaskowell, Chuck Friedbauer, and the assistants as well. It was obviously a rough go against the Shock P on Saturday, but uh, by all indications, a lot of teams are going to struggle against the Sabres this year. Um, the state, to start with the Sabres, I, I think it's very um, clear that the Sabres should be a top, considered a top five team. They played Prior Lake in their first game, and as well as the... Um, I'm sorry, in Prior Lake's first game, and they were up on Prior Lake eight or nine to three. And Prior Lake, as befits their championship culture, came back and won the game in overtime. But Shakopee has a really strong group of, of sophomores, juniors, and seniors, and they will be reckoned with. I will not be surprised if they were to make it to the state tournament this year. Meanwhile, Jefferson, let's not forget last season, uh, back in 2019, Jefferson 10 and three, in the regular season, obviously a tough section. They were seeded fourth, but uh, it's a Jaguar program. Obviously, your son helped lead uh, th that team back a few years ago to the state title game. It's a, a culture of winning for the Jaguars as well. And I think what's really frustrating um, and uh, for the older Jags, like Aiden and, and that, is last year, that team was, the 2020 version of the Jags was a special uh, team. Great job, Parker Boone. Hunter Payer with it now offensively. Yep. Nice job again. Parker keeping the man in front of him, meeting him with physicality, not just swinging his stick at him. Good job. This is interesting. This is what happens when you have an eighth grader. I had literally no idea Kevin was going to play midfielder. Here is Kevin. He typically plays attack, but that's fine. Some big shoes to fill from older brother Ryan. He's a, who's a, all of a sudden, Rob, has graduated college already. Yep. Nice move, Aiden. Can't trigger, though. Reese Washington trying to scoop it up and does to keep the possession. Mm hmm This is what I was talking about in this type of slow possession is really helpful to the Jags defense because it lets them... Literally, they're just standing yeah. around. As the, the, No need to do otherwise as the shot from Kevin Graff misses yep. wide. Jefferson will keep it. I like that shot from Kevin. He drove in hard and then got back to his strong hand, got his free, and that's one of those shots that it goes in or it misses and we keep the ball. Nice play by the attack to keep the ball. That's why sometimes shots are almost better than passes in lacrosse at the right situation. Here's Washington in with a shot. It spins, but it's a save by Selkin. Reese Washington is going to be a key part. Watch how rapidly he gets free. Oh, we don't see the beat, but he will, he will be a trigger person for this offense for years because he has literally got point guard vision. He plays basketball. Here you go. Gets by him and gets the shot off quickly. No one was open. That was really nice to see. 
behind the net. Parker Boone, one more look at that shot by Washington. Really good save actually by Selkin. Mm -hmm. Chask is doing a really nice job keeping a long stick on Cody, forcing other people other than Cody to dodge. Cody does a nice job. That's he looks backside because Chask is all watching the ball. Problem is it's a hard pass to make. Cody's got it. Cody Rinquist has an angle. Oh, I thought he was going to get that. Couldn't get the shot off though. Good convergence by the Chaska defense. When we play Benilde, or even in this game, when he gets inside the hash marks and gets inside the 10 yard line with his left hand, he should shoot. He's such a good shooter. I feel very comfortable with that. And I'm confident that uh, Riley Bain, the offensive coordinator will uh, teach him and talk to him about that. Cody, that was a really nice move. Cody, another hockey game. My wife asked me earlier, Kevin, and obviously we're not the lacrosse mind of the year. What is it about the sport of hockey that just translates to lacrosse? We did the uh, we did the Kennedy game last week, and more than half the Kennedy roster were hockey guys. You know, I think it's a Minnesota thing because where I'm from, most of the lacrosse guys are basketball, football guys. Um, lacrosse gets, um, you know, there's a lot of action. You have the concept of a stick controlling an object, a goal, you know, the physicality. There's a lot of stuff that, that, that translates really well. Um, there are things that don't, but, uh, you know, like I, I've always said that lacrosse is a situation that translates a lots of little parts of other sports to make it its own, right? It's got shot selection that's much more like basketball than anything else. Oh, fast break opportunity. Jake Nemchek with a trail check. Great ground ball by Nolan. Jake leaves. Down. This should be good. And in front. Oh, Parker almost, Boone. Almost, he yes. recovers and scores. That was a great catch. Oh, no. By no, Parker he was Boone. in the crease. Okay, he was in the crease. Wave it off. Wave it off. Still Loose a great ball. catch by Parker. Oh, we got to be up on that. Chaska has it back as you watch the replay of this distance. Nice takeaway. I'm not sure where the crease violation was there, Rob. If you look at it, you can see that uh, semi-circle out front. One more look at it. This is very close for Parker. I think it's the Boy. left foot, maybe. And that, left we, foot, maybe. That angle, when you look at it, the reverse angle from behind the net, it looked like that foot was outside of that zone. So maybe a tough one against Jefferson there. Meanwhile, a nice save by McCarthy. Nice job by Milton. Gets the rebound. Avoids two checks, full field pass, and we get on offense to Hunter Payer, and, and nice check. Oh, and again, that's great situational awareness by an eighth grader. The period was ending. He gains possession at the box line, realizes there's very little time left, and has the presence of mind to make literally a 50 to 60 yard pass to Hunter's stick. And it's literally, you could not draw it up. That's a, that's a really great play by a young player. When the first quarter has come to a close. Jefferson, I'd say the back half of that quarter, Rob, they really started to tilt the field a little bit. They don't have the lead yet, but things trending in the right direction for Jefferson. We'll take a short break, 2-2 two -two after one here at Jefferson High School. Back at Jefferson High School on a beautiful late April, early evening. Jefferson and Chaska first to broadcast for the Jaguars. They're one and one so far this year. Chaska 0 and one alongside Rob Graff and our crew. Josh Powers with you. 2-2, Rob. 
a good one developing early. Chask getting a couple early goals. Jefferson, about the last six minutes, they really started to control things uh, more both offensively and then forcing some turnovers defensively as well. You know, Josh, your, your last point about forcing turnovers is critical for this Jags team. The more opportunities they can play offense is critical because, quite honestly, they're young at offense. We know what Aiden can do. We know what Cody can do. But literally everyone else, we need to see what they can do. And one of the things I'm concerned about is I haven't seen Reed Rehnquist on the field yet. And Reed is one of their senior captains, a great defensive transition midi who's really worked on his shot. Not having him here is a big problem and a weakness for us. It's going to ask a lot of Milton uh, Spears and Kevin Graff if they're going to be some of the ones taking up that, that taking the slack on that. Well, and we would assume he's not available if we have not seen Reed through one quarter of play. I would agree. I'm looking for 23 on the sideline. I know you're going to call the game. No, you go for it. If you can, if you can tell over there, the numbers are a little bit far away. Jefferson picks up a ground ball here. Again, Milton, nice transition. Gets it up to Graf. Just an eighth grader, Milton Spears. A fellow eighth grader, Kevin Graf. Nice pass out front, and it's a Jaguar goal the to great take the lead. Charlie Gilbert on the receiving end of that nice pass. Okay, a little detail that only affect, impacts me. Charlie is my backdoor neighbor, like our backyard neighbor, our yards abut. So Kevin will drag the ball back keep his head look, throw back across his body to Charlie. The defense is going to, the one playing Charlie is going to follow the ball. Kevin's throwing back against his body, and Charlie knows that that's coming and goes to that back pipe. So you're saying your son and Charlie have played some games of catch in their time. In, in the backyard. In fact, Charlie called Kevin, and, and uh, the two of them went and shot this Sunday. So Charlie's an important leader for this team. Um, he's a junior. He plays really hard, but again, he's someone that could have really used last year to help him. Okay? And, you know, he's on the field being really productive right now. Got a whistle and a flag. And this is going to result in a man up, it looks like, for Jefferson. Yep. Number 31, Carter Bra taking the penalty. So man up for the yeah. Jaguars for the first time. Yeah, clearly Reed is not here. Hunter Payer, I think, has taken his spot. Hunter's in now. Oh, no, it may be. Yeah, I'm not sure. But Hunter Reed is usually on ups. So man up. I didn't get to catch the length of that man up. So we had a nice pass in front. Oh, what a save though by Selkin. Really nice job by Hunter to find that lane that Parker could pass. Nice job by Dane Miller. And he oh. transitions it ahead quickly to Parker Boone. Dane Miller, another hockey guy, was on the JV this year as a sophomore. Yep. Promising defenseman, also D here, obviously. So they swing it around. Shot misses wide. Good. Back up. Quick, uh, as you said, the back up there, Hunter Payer got there to keep the possession. Really like that shot by Aiden. Um, uh, we need to get Aiden some comfort shooting the ball. He really has a great shot. Reese Washington yes! rips it into the back of the net. And all of a sudden, Jefferson up by two, Rob. As we, we kind of talked about this as the first quarter was ending. Jefferson starting to pick things up. You could see the momentum building. They've scored three straight. Watch Aiden drag and then on a line pass. We have a great stepping into the shot from Reese. Really excited to see that. If Reese can, can really add that, again, great. One of the things on that look you may have seen is, is Aiden taking three or four steps towards the goal line. Not the goal, but the goal line. That forces them on man down to come honor that, which gives Reese a step or two to step down into that shot, just like Atterbury did when uh, they scored their second goal. Um, again, I, I, for the Jefferson program, having Reese hit that shot is huge. Only a sophomore, Reese Washington. 
There's Cody on the faceoff. Oh, the official hit the ball with his foot. Accidentally, obviously. Picked up by Chaska's Carter Broad of the penalty area. As an old defender, I'll tell you, two of the defensemen I really enjoy watching for the Jags are Gordy and Stone. They both check really, really legally, but really, really hard. And it's on the stick, it's on the gloves, it's not an uncontrolled swing, but they let it go, and, and it's really enjoyable as an ex-defenseman. This is, okay. Chaska, they could use a goal now all of a sudden to kind of halt this Jaguar momentum, and they haven't really had an offensive possession in a while. Nope. See if they try to find Atterbury at the top of the zone. Good stick Gordy. by Gordy, but picked up by the Hawks. You hear how loud. It's great to have these mics down on the field. Jefferson talking that much is really high level for a high school lacrosse team out here. That is something that I, I really always love to hear, but oft times don't. And, and Jefferson, again, led by Jake McCarthy, is doing a great job at that. You hear the, him calling out the location, who's right, who's left, who's going. Really good stuff. So far, nothing doing for the Hawks. Long distance shot snared by McCarthy. I think one of the things you've seen Jake realize is Atterbury's shooting the ball when he gets it, no matter where he is. And I, I think that you get one free one, and then you don't. After that, Jake realizes that. Meaning that a shot right from now, that Right now, move distance. the ball. Right there. There you go. Box it. We get it to Graf. And now behind the net, Gilbert. Jefferson a chance to go up by three here. Four minutes into the second quarter can really start to separate themselves from the Hawks. Again, Flynn Erst, the defensive coordinator for Chaska, is doing a great job with his matchups. He's really trained his guys that there are certain people we want to cover certain people. And they're being very disciplined on making sure they get a pole to Cody. Eli Countryman on a dodge. That'll be a moving pick um, against the Jags. You have to come to a full stop before you encounter contact when White has the ball. Much, much like basketball with yep. that rule. Absolutely. So possession back to Chaska. Here's Atterbury. Oh, yeah, we'll this see is if he a problem. Fires. There he goes. It's wide this time. You see him the same matchup. They had lost control of who had who. Atterbury did a great job of finding the ball with angle and did the absolute right thing to shoot. I want to see more. If I'm him, I want to see more of that. Just enough room there for mm -hmm. Atterbury to maintain control. I like watching Atterbury. He's got a really nice left-handed release, very rapid shot, but he also works his right hand effectively. It's not, it doesn't look like an afterthought. He's a real nice player. I would build my offense around him if I was uh, Eugene Zevolov. He's only a sophomore, number five in purple. Here he is again. Uh-oh. Defender fell down, Jefferson trying to rotate Great. over. What a save by McCarthy. That's the save that McCarthy's been making all year. Okay, that offside, short distance. I mean, that's the save that why it makes Jake such an advantage for the Jaguars to have him there. Well, it was so surprising he let in that first goal, but he's been pretty good since. Watch how he steps with his right hand and drives his hands to the ball. Right foot and drives his hands. You see that step? Gets his hands to it. Here comes Cody. Cody Rinquist trying to score for the first time in this game and misses wide, but Jefferson will keep it. A little quiet so far for Cody Rinquist, but that's fine by Jefferson. They have the lead. Others have contributed offensively. Mm-hmm. And no goals yet for Aiden, but uh, Jefferson continuing to play on the lead midway through this quarter. Here comes Aiden on a dodge. That's it. That's it. They rotate it over. Again, you're just trying to get one guy out of position, Rob, and then you can try to take advantage with numbers and angles. I really like what this coaching staff is doing right now. They are 
Great pass out front and Kevin Graff with his second goal of the year. Rob, uh, you mentioned his first goal was a little bit, uh, m maybe more higher degree of difficulty. That was a pretty easy put away set up by a great offensive play. Uh, it was a great pass, great dodge by Aiden, draws the help, Charlie pushes left-handed, Kevin finishes again. Once again, we see a, def a really nice play by an attackman for Jefferson using both his hands and a quick, nice finish. And I think that was set up the previous play. They went behind the net and then over to the yes. far side of the yes. field. And then Chaska seemed to flow that way. That left the middle portion in front of the net open for that uh, easy finish there for Kevin Graham. Well, again, I think you really hit on a great point there, Josh. That offense, the one they're running, quite often you'll see a lot of colleges. Ohio State runs this offense. UNC will run this offense. And really what often happens is you get that wing dodge down to X and then push it up the far side and re-dodge. You're moving the defense from weak to strong side. Charlie Gilbert did a really mature thing right there. And after they went once to the far side, he caught it give a little half step and came back to his left hand and that's what opened things up because they had already left they had already left Kevin to go slide to the wing shooter so many goals in lacrosse are made more by the passer than the shooter and that was clearly one of them so now Jefferson by three risky pass there nice catch by Chaska's Gavin Harbo number nine Here's Atterbury. You can tell he wants to get to that. That's left a moving hand, pick. And it's called. Yep. Right now, the short stick should get it. That was Owen Baker doing some good defensive work for Jefferson. Just a freshman again, another younger guy for the Jaguars. Look, there's there's no there's no dispute that right now the Jags are really what I call the Rosso hockey model, right? You have kids of all different grades participating and par and doing so in a way that helps the team. You know, here's here's a hockey stud right here, Colton Gansky. Gilbert out front, nice stick. That's 17, Dakota yeah. Schroeder with a nice pickup. That's one where after you've made a really great pass as a young attackman, which Charlie, even though he's a junior, is because he missed last year, the temptation is I can get another one. Mm -hmm. And that was a skip pass to a really good shooter that if it gets through, it's probably a really great opportunity. And nice turnover here by Cobb. Nice ground ball by Nemchek. Cobb leads the break, finding Gansky. There's very little opportunity here. Pull it out. Good decision finding Gilbert. So the fast break thwarted, but Jefferson still maintains possession. They force Selkin into a difficult pass there, Robin. That's where we talked earlier, where on those passes like that, win could become a factor, and Jefferson had numbers, was able to pick it up. Rasa Bandit, that just misses. You bring up a great point. Jefferson is playing to that win. They're running a deeper ride, which is gonna force longer passes, most likely if they can't get it to a short stick quickly to run it out. And the ball did get held up in there and it allowed Nolan Cobb to close on that. So under three left here in the second quarter, Jefferson has not allowed a goal in this quarter and they've scored three. And that's the margin right now. Move it. There's a long distance oh, yes. shot and a goal. Zach Jensen, a junior. Jefferson getting involvement from everywhere offensively, Rob, and now six to two. But again, Aiden, the pass makes the shot, right? Aiden draws two people to him. Let's watch this. Draws two. Wow, what a great play by Aiden, but the shot, the shot by Jensen was really great in terms of its form. You'll notice he has his hands up, his hands lower on the shaft, full rotation through the torso, points the toe to allow the hip to come through, really snaps it out. I really, really love that. That's one of, if you ask me for each player, they have one thing that's their top thing, right? For Jensen, if you get him that step down repeatedly, that's a real opportunity for him to contribute to the squad. He's got a real nice quick release and his shot comes out heavy and hard. Sloppy pass here from Chaska. Jefferson picks it up. So Jefferson in control here seemingly with another offensive opportunity as 
Running it in, Gordy Gombold. He'll fire! Saved by Selkin. He was trying for a long stick goal there, Gordy. Yeah. Maybe a little too greedy, but judging by your reaction, Rob. I'm pretty confident that Co Coach Freebie <laughs> will look at that and go, yeah, you don't get paid for that shot. <laughs> okay? <laughs> nice ride there by, by the Jags. Nice lead pass there by Charlie. Aiden picks it up. We saw Burnsville last week score a long stick goal, but that was with uh, under two minutes left in the game, kind of a cherry on top of the Sunday mm -hmm. type of goal from Burnsville. They were comfortably ahead. Char Here's Cody. Oh. He'll fire and score. There's the great dodge ability that you talked to me about off air from Cody Rinquist. Great first step and created some separation. What's really I, I love about that is Cody recognized the moment. Watch, there's a short stick defending him. So there's a short stick, he runs past it, and that's the goal. That's why the matchup thing that I talked about, Coach Ernst for Chaska, really focusing on, is so important. And it has just been difficult for the Hawks to set anything up offensively. They have two goals, both have come from long distance shots by one player. Jefferson has really done a nice job of limiting opportunities for the Hawks in this game around the Jaguar net. Okay. And timeout called here by Chaska. They, they know they need a goal here in this last minute 15, Rob. All of a sudden, they're down by five. You pointed it out, Josh, at the end of the first quarter. The, f the flow of the game really shifted, maybe not on the scoreboard, but really shifted in terms of pace of play, ball control, and, and, and you called it. And, and that's what's happened. The Jags have really pushed the pace appropriately and pulled it out when they haven't, with exception of Gordy. And <laughs> look, as a defenseman, I love him, but that's one where you got to remember hey, there are other people with the short six that get paid for that. If he's five yards in, closer, I love that shot. And that's where the Burnsville long stick scored yeah. his goal, right in front of the net. It wasn't yeah. a long distance shot like that. So, you know, I, 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 he's been playing great. I'll bet you he has three or four cause turnovers. Those are the things that get you noticed. Um, but getting back to the pace of play, Jags have really done a nice job of pushing, getting high-quality shots, whether in transition or in all-even, and putting their shots in good places. So, you know, Aiden Rasband is sharing the ball to Jensen. That's a great, great team play, and, and that's what Jefferson is going to need to do to be successful as a team. Their strength, yes, they have some great defenders, goalies. They have Aiden and Cody, you know, Reed. They have Kyler Dawson, who no one's seen. When Kyler comes back, you will notice Kyler Dawson. You heard it here first. Okay, but what I love is this is a team that's sharing the ball. They know who needs to get the ball. The ball, the game is determining who gets the ball. You know, and the best teams of any sport do that. You know, you watch the Gonzagas in basketball. The ball finds the shooter, and and that's what it looks like for us when we're playing well. That's what we see. We've certainly seen that here in the second quarter. And to your point, it hasn't been. Cody Rinquist scoring five and Aiden Rasaband at two. It's they've have those two have one goal combined out of the seven for Jefferson. So very encouraging to see uh, a well-rounded offensive attack for Jefferson. And certainly defensively, you hold uh, any team to two goals and a half, you're going to win uh, the vast majority of those games. Mm -hmm. So be interesting right now. Chaska is winning some faceoffs and they're down. It'll be interesting to watch if they hold for one shot or try and get a shot and with the hope of helping me get two goals at this last minute. Cody, you're two right now. Cody, you're two right now. Cody, got my left. Cody, got my left. Again, listen to this talk by, by Jake and all the defense identifying who's the one, the first slide to the ball, and who's the two, the one replacing the first slide. Here's Chaska playing for Why? one. Now they might not get a chance to, a ground ball. Jake Nemchek has a really strong stick skills. He'll be in, if he can pick it up, he'll get, yep, he'll there it get is. it. Nemchek. Look at that smart pass. Get the ball to the short stick, call a timeout. Great job by Coach Cater. 
And Jefferson will set up a final offensive sequence in the final 25 seconds. So we've seen, yes, Jefferson played good defense, but some some Chaska errant passes too. That one should have been an easy mm -hmm. rotation and uh, Jefferson was able to take advantage. You know, it's, it's, I want to talk for a second though about Coach Cater's handling of that short time period, okay? You have a turnover, a quick transition, and we get the ball settled. He doesn't wait until the ball's box. He doesn't wait, because that wastes time that we need to set up the offense when we come out of the time out. This is really effective coaching at a very high level, and it's one thing that we saw in the Chanhassen game early the first game. There were three or four coaching decisions by Coach Cater that really were impactful in the end result being so close. One of them, was he came out in a, um, was a defensive decision, two of them were offensive decisions, and one was a transition decision, a timeout like that. Those four plays by an experienced coach make all the difference to a young team. And he's been making them, he's been really doing a great job. Jefferson losing just by one, six to five to Chaska, and then- Chan Hassan. Or Chan Hassan, excuse me, Chaska the opponent today, and then Obviously, Jefferson in their second game beat Burnsville by a couple. So Jefferson looking to move above 500. And a goal here would certainly help their cause late here in this first half. Let's watch one of the things that some coaches will do in this last 25 seconds is they'll know the offense is designed a specific play. But if they show up in a different defense where the slide's coming from a different place, you can really disrupt that. So it's gonna be interesting to see where we see. If you see a sweep, meaning a defender or offensive player coming across and the defender stays, okay, so they're in man-to-man -man, because nine stayed with Reese. Reese is gonna invert, it's called, taking a midi behind, okay? He'll set a pick, Reese will come off, and he's right now looking for an opportunity to, oh, nice defense by nine. Nice physicality. Selkin picks it up and he will just send it to a teammate as the first half expires. But what a quarter for Jefferson, Rob. The second quarter, they thoroughly dominated. It started 2-2 and Jefferson at the end of 12 minutes didn't allow a goal. And they got five of their own here as we watch the highlights here. These are first half highlights in the 7-2 Jefferson lead. It's that nice gritty play by Parker Boone, that hockey, really nice shot by Atterbury. It's that step down with the left hand we talked about. Yeah, Chaska was ahead two to one at this stage, but then all Jefferson from there. Okay. Ball was on the outside there. Jake stopped it. And nice shot there by Hunter Payer, his second goal of the year. Nice save, save there by Selkin on a shot by Aiden Rasabandit, who did not score in the first half, but this was a disallowed goal by Parker Boone, a tough one there for Jefferson. It looked like he was out of that area. Yep. That's that transition, slow break. Gilbert scoring yep. that look out front, and then... Nice save again by the Cheska goalie, and then there's that goal by um, Reese. Washington, another great save by Jake. This is a nice goal by your eighth grade son, yeah. Kevin Graff. And then, and then Jensen. Yeah, Zach Jensen ripping one there. And Cody Rinquist, his goal to round out the scoring for Jefferson. A lot of Jaguar highlights appropriately for that uh, second quarter. And they play like that, uh, Rob. Uh, they're gonna give a lot of teams some problems here this season. What's really important in a season like this when we haven't played in so long is to see improvement each game. Last game against Burnsville, we played Cody Ball, okay? We, we totally rode Cody like he was secretariat. And he delivered. I mean, he scored at the end of the game, he scored three out of our final four goals, and they were beautiful. But doing that against the top 15 teams of the, of the state, is not going to work. You know, you have Benilde with a defender going to Notre Dame, two middies going to, I think, Providence and, and Duke. You have, you know, Shakopee with their horde of really athletic and intelligent, well-coached players. You have Prior Lake with their culture 
and 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 the guys who who it means so much to them to to win. We have to be able, as Jefferson grows, to not play Cody Ball. Because it's too easy, as we've seen, you know, again, Coach Flynn Ernst doing a nice job getting a long stick and an early slide to Cody all the time. That's going to work on anyone, all right? The type of goals we're seeing now, whether it's Parker Boone on the garbage or Aiden passing back to Jensen, those are the type of plays that if we, I'm really excited to see you after the Burnsville game. Because it says, we realize we all have to contribute. And, and that's what that second quarter said to me. And hopefully Jefferson can continue that here in the second half. Trying to move to 2-1 and one in good shape, but still 24 minutes to come. We'll break for halftime. Second half coming up next on BECTV. Back at Jefferson High School, second half coming up. Jefferson out front by five, seven to two. Alongside our crew and Rob Graff, Josh Power is with you on this beautiful Thursday. Temperature probably right now around 60 degrees. Wind has died down a little bit, so it's just turning into a beautiful evening here on the west side of Bloomington and a beautiful second quarter for Jefferson. Rob, we went into the second quarter, tied at two, and now Jefferson has built themselves a nice cushion of five goals. I, you know, I think the, the big challenge for the Jags this half is to continue the style of play that they showed in the second quarter. Aggressive on defense, talking on defense, transitioning the ball with safe, smart passes up the wings, moving the ball, to behind and then looking what they have and if they don't find some good offensive movement get if highly effective shots i don't think there was one shot in the in our offense that i would have said eh, let's not take that one okay and and that's really exciting especially for a younger team maybe complacency perhaps we'll see how jefferson reacts to being in front by this much it hasn't happened yet for jefferson this year so we'll see how they play with a bigger-ish lead, although there's still plenty of time. As you can see, we're just underway as Jefferson has won the second half faceoff and has it. Chaska playing its second game of the year. They played Shakopee in their first game. It did not go well for them. 22 to one loss. Jefferson has scored the last six goals in this game. Again, we're seeing some really mature decision-making by Aiden Rasbandith. He's got a great matchup. There's the dodge. Oh. Selkin may have got a piece of it. Look at Washington Look at pick it up. And again, I almost like that he didn't shoot that. And I know he was close to the net, but it wasn't the best of angles. He'll go ahead and pass it back out, and Jefferson will continue on offense. We, we talked a little bit about the difference between the various sports. That's a shot in hockey you take, but in lacrosse, you're absolutely right. You don't take that shot. We don't need to get the ball on net. We need the ball in or miss where we get the backup. I really like what we're seeing right now. Gansky sends it behind Good the net. Good opportunity here. Kevin Graff in front. Parker Boone off the side of yep. that, or was it in? That's in. It was in, okay. So Parker Boone, that took the contact. There's where maybe his hockey background comes in. Robbie's used to delivering those checks on the hockey ice, and that time was able to do enough with it to find the goal for the Jaguars, now eight to two. Get a short stick matchup, get a nice pass right to his stick, 
that that's a play that you, the passer says to the shooter, "Thanks for saving my butt." Okay, <laughs> that was that was a no, no, no. Yes, right. And that's one of the things. That's why Parker Boone is such an important part of this team. He's so physically, athletically impressive that he can catch that, keep his feet, and get a quality shot off. You know, that makes your whole defense, or I'm sorry, your whole offense better. Nice little cause turnover there almost. This is where Jefferson's really excelled. They have bothered Chaska when they have had it on offense. Watch how Jefferson is, what's, their long sticks are extending, which means they're playing out far away from the cage and really forcing Chaska to worry about that one-on-one -on -one matchup and not getting into their team offense. One of the things Owen Baker does very well for, for a fresh person is he has that long-legged athleticism He has a, um, and can really get out and bother people with his head. Really technically a nice, nice freshman. Excited to see where he goes in a couple, in, as he, his career continues. So Xavier Harvo in the corner for Chaska. They just don't seem to really know exactly where they want to go just yet on this possession. To try to throw it out front, good stick. Uh-oh. And it's batted over and now into the crease. Well done there by the Jaguar D. Nice little job by Owen Baker there to get possession, but not try and pull the ball out with his really long stick. And instead, he gives the ball back to Jake and Jake can do something with it. Chaska's changed their ride, meaning their forecheck, if you will. They have pressed, they are just, they just pressed down hard on Jake and forced him to make that pass under pressure. That's a new thing that, that Coach Cater, I'm sure, saw and is going to make some adjustments. And again, Neil Chaska, you would think needing to change something to try to get some more offensive touches here, trailing by five. Another cause turnover by Cobb. Jefferson's been good on these ground balls here so far in this game. And they get another one, flag flying though late in this, it might go against Jefferson and Chaska. I think this is gonna be their first man up of the game, Rob, if I'm not mistaken. I think you're correct. They're gonna call a trip um, on Jake Nemchek. Um, you know, it's one of those things where you let the, you appreciate the officials trying to let the game play a little, but I think that's a hold. They're holding a stick. Then he comes through and gets his feet. So that's clearly the right call on the trip. I, I just would have liked to have seen before that a hold call on the Chaska player or the Jefferson player holding the Chaska, move the ball out to the wing and start there. So the Hawks get it, now man up, and they really need a goal there. They haven't scored since midway through the first quarter, but actually may have even been earlier than that, their second goal. Yeah, keep an eye on five, Attenberry. Know where he is at all times. There he is on that wing. Nice way to get to him. Really nice job by Gordy to approach and get his stick to his hands so that player had to back out, which disrupts the timing of the man up slash power play. Again, remember we talked about the sun? That's the exact angle of the sun that you lose the ball. And that sun is behind our camera view. We're facing to the east. So that sun setting west that may have affected that pass. And Jefferson's going to get it on a violation by the Hawks here. Matt Tenbrook with the punt return clear. <laughs> Matt's a great athlete. We're, uh, the Jags are so lucky to have him back. Man no, up about to be over there. Yep. The man up is over now for Jefferson. Or for Chaska, excuse me. Cody waits for the player to come onto the field, and it's it's Kevin Graff, and now the Jaguars have it set up. Eli Countryman came on too. I think Eli has a matchup they should look at. Oh, no, Kevin's got a shorty. They're going to go with that. So Graff behind the net trying to dodge. Draws a second defender. Oh, now. Now he'll fire. Oh. And the save by Selkin. I can already know what's happening at my house right now because I, I know that Ryan is saying, 
Put the ball low and far side. Is Ryan watching at home? He is. Okay. He is. That's the right decision to shoot. Both slides fell off. It's in the right time and place. That's just a shot that it's a good shot. Guy made a nice save. He's a lefty goalie. Shooters have to recognize that. I'm glad he shot that. So meanwhile, almost midway through this third quarter already, and Chaska still stuck on two. Making things difficult on Xavier Harbo. Uh -oh. They get it down low, and McCarthy, I think, got a piece of it with the body, it looked like, Kevin. Or, yep. excuse me, uh, Rob. <laughs> um, Might not be the only time I do that this that's year. Okay. Sorry about that. McCarthy definitely, it's called holding his post. He put his shoulder and his hip and his ankle right up against the post and gave the shooter very little angle. Um, Jags are going to go down right now on, a, I guess, a push with possession call. So Chask, another man up, really needs to take advantage of this opportunity. I don't like that. There's oh, Atterbury, there but he forgot the ball. Great ground ball by Cobb. Great outlet to Tenbrook. And Jefferson quickly into Chaska territory. That was a nice pass by McCarthy. He saw that quickly. That's one of those things that I, 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 I Sorry, an advanced goalie gives you that outlet pass to a short stick on the run. That's the type of thing that gives you, instead of playing for two in two possessions down, they get one shot and that's it. You know, it, in a way, get, lacrosse is a game of math. How many possessions, how many quality shots? And that type of pass is huge on preventing them from having an extra. Especially with the wind like it is today, those longer passes have been more difficult. Yeah. The nice thing, though, is that was the Tenbrook could see it. He didn't have to look in the sun. There's Parker Boone again trying for his third goal. I think that was a really good decision to pull it out. He was really tempted to try and get something for it. But when you're up by six, you want a perfect shot. You don't want an okay shot. Nice job there by Chaska. Yeah, risky pass from... Uh, Jefferson's Cody Rinquist, who's intercepted by the Hawks. I think that was a ward. Yep, I think they called a ward on Chaska, which is a change of possession, not a time serve. Again, That's that, that hard pass. That's a nice catch by Zach Jensen. That pass from Aiden is tough. You got it. Parker Boone. That's a skip. Nice skip to Cody. Nice closeout by the Chaska defender. Aiden spin to the middle. Kevin Graff to finish. What a pass from Aiden Rass the bandit. Again, the passer makes the shot, right? So Aiden draws two, makes a pass off his back foot on a line to Kevin's strong hand where Kevin doesn't have to move. That's a shot that Kevin should hit a ton. And again, the pass makes the shot. See, Kevin's got the hockey player flow, the, ha the hair in the back there. What do you think about that, Rob? Don't go there. <laughs> that was it. Pretty good stuff right there. there Watch go. it one more time. Watch where Kevin puts the shot in one motion. He doesn't gather. He doesn't cradle. And the ball goes straight down to that off-stick side low. That's a nice combination by both. Owen Baker with the face-off win. You may get your pole goal. In front and stand, Parker Boone scores. Now Jefferson really pouring it on, up 10 to two. That again, we talked earlier about Owen Baker being a freshman that they need to count on and, and step up, and that's a great play. He drew, 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 waited for the open come to come to him and found the ball to the person who needed to finish it. Nice, great pick it up in one. Lose, look at those strides, getting him to space, avoids. Great pass to his stick. Again, pass makes the shot. Owen does all that work. Parker does a great job of being strong and finishing. Great teamwork here, guys. What's really nice about that is Parker catches it with his chest facing the middle, but takes his right foot 
and closes off. So any ha contact is going to be in his back, which means if he gets pushed into the net, it's still their ball. It's a push on Chaska. That was a really nice uh, play by Parker. Chaska wins this most recent faceoff. That pass hits the back of the net, and McCarthy has it. So an easy turnover there for the Jaguars. Again, nice job by Eli. Oh, darn it. That was a nice job by Eli Countryman to come to this side of the field. We'll talk about that in a second. Good active Jefferson Sticks, though. This will be tracked down in time by Harvo. And now Atterbury. Look at a good job that Eli's doing, forcing him to his weak hand, his right, and forcing him below where there's lower angle. It may look not normal because he's so high above him, but that's exactly the right thing to do by, by Eli. Nice and trail check there by Nemchek again. May have affected that shot. It didn't look like a lot of pace was on that shot. McCarthy with an easy pickup, but now Jefferson back-to-back -back turnovers as they've tried to exit. Nice hustle by Reese. Again, what a great job by Jefferson to get in the hole and in that unsettled situation where was the, there was that turnover. And McCarthy again. Ooh. That's a play on. That's a Jefferson free clear. And they will call Chaska there for a violation, it looks like. Yep. Jake is allowed under the rules to full follow through, okay? And if you see it, Chaska interrupts that follow through. That's a free clear for Jefferson. There are occasionally refs that will see that. Inside, shot. Oh! It spins oh. in! It looked like it went off the post, a little back spin for Rasa Bandith. And uh, goaltender Selkin couldn't locate it before it spun back into the net. We talked real quickly how Eli was doing such a great job of staying on the high side of um, Atterbury. So Atterbury had to push it behind. Watch how the Chaska D allows Aiden to get to the middle with that shiver shep. Bam, gets to the middle. And there's the shot, and a little back spin gets it done. So again, gets to the inside, and the shot. That, that's really nice. Again, it demonstrates Eli Countryman doing a really defensive, effective job within the team defense, and what happens if you don't, which is what Aiden just did. So that team defense is limited Chaska to just two goals in this game. Notice Jefferson's really experimenting with some different face-off options, which I think is, given that they're up a few, is a really good idea. They have two primary face-off guys, but every team wants to have that, that ability to put a long stick to change things up a little bit if you're having problems at the face-off, and this is a great opportunity to, s to work on that. I think that's great. Some sort of a... Failure to advance okay. in high school. Once you have possession and cross the midfield line, ah, that's the sun. Um, you have to get it within the box. You'll hear coaches yell box it all the time. And that box is 30-yard line and in, correct? Correct, and as well as 10 yards in from the sideline. So it's the box is 20 yards up from the goal line and then 10 yards in from the sidelines. Graf going to get called here. Gordy Hattrick. <sighs> Penalty go assist and goal. The reason why they called that is he extended his arms. That's a that's a cross check. Much like in hockey, they're one of Bang. those indicators they look yeah. for. That that's a that's not a surprise. That's not a surprise. It's in the front, which is fine, but if he hadn't extended his arms that he, he'd been fine. If he had lowered his shoulder or not extended his arms, he doesn't get that call. That's a good call by the official. Not a surprise. Like you're objective enough to have that uh, <laughs> against your uh, own son there, but it, it did look like the correct no, call. The and right maybe call. a little unnecessary as the ball had already been uh, jarred free at that point. Again, keep your eye on Atterbury here. 
watch there's probably going to be some exchange or a cross pass looking to him they want him to shoot and it's interesting because they had him at the top of the offensive zone earlier and now maybe trying to get him into a different spot to get him a little bit more space oh okay that's got to be changed when you are playing man down once you have responsibility for a player and he's got the ball it's very rare that you're going to pass that player off. There are some defenses where it happens, but very few. Here's the other Harvo. That's Gavin Harvo, saved by McCarthy. Again, looking over the top to find their shooter. Nice check. One thing that hockey players do really, really well is that little, what we would call a goose, to move the ball into a space where they can get it. And that's been something that, you know, over my years here which, as a basketball player, we don't think about that as much. The hockey players do that instinctually. Yeah, it's a bo the board work, those touches along the yeah. wall. Mm-hmm. That's exactly right. Here's a ground ball. See the nice box out. Cody gets it. Cody just gliding into Chaska territory. Final 30 seconds of the quarter. Slash. And a delayed call coming up here on Chaska. They should hold the ball now, Jefferson should. And there won't be a face-off. And then they'll start with the man up Correct. in the fourth quarter. Correct. And Aiden, Aiden understands this. I would expect him to not pass the ball. Okay. And Graf realizing that here in the final couple seconds. So Jefferson, without the faceoff, will start with the man up come fourth quarter. But another great quarter for the Jaguars, Rob. Four more goals. Again, they haven't allowed a goal now since, gosh, midway through the first quarter. Jefferson in command here, 11-2. to two. And I want to briefly touch on as we we'll, – we'll go – let's uh, hold off on the break here for just a second if we can – and uh, over, over the weekend, Rob, I know story came out, uh, and it's, uh, it's been a, a tough week for Jefferson. Uh, Mike Ryan, the girls' hockey coach, unfortunately passed away over the weekend uh, following an incident on Saturday night in St. Paul. Uh, just uh, devastating for us here uh, at BEC TV covering that team uh, with Coach Ryan for the past few years. Um, I know you, you have... Um, a, daughter, a daughter that played for him and uh, uh, just a rough time for, for the Jefferson community and certainly our condolences at, for, uh, here at BEC TV go out to the Ryan family and to the Jefferson community. I, I echo all those thoughts, Josh. He came along and really, you know, rekindled for my daughter her love of hockey for her last two years and, and um, I, I can't speak highly enough of Mike. He was, he's meant so much to so many young women and, and men. I mean, he's coached all over the place. Mm -hmm. I know some friends of his th that are, are, are absolutely devastated at this, and I can't imagine what it would feel for his family. I, I, just a wonderful human being who, whose light was snuffed out much, much too early. You know, a lifelong Jaguar, a, a player, on a state championship team back in those glory days of the late 80s and early 90s. Such a tragic story uh, that came out over the weekend and uh, something that will not be the last time we talk about that. But uh, again, uh, uh, on behalf of BEC TV, our thoughts and prayers go out to the Ryan family. All right, so fourth quarter, Rob. Things still looking good for the Jaguars now, 11-2. We, we talked about when the quarter started, you wanted to see Jefferson play the way in, it, they had played in the second quarter, in the third quarter, and I thought by and large they did that. I agree. Uh, ball was moving well. Defense was assertive and aggressive appropriately. You know, you're never going to play a, a lacrosse game and not have penalties. They got some work in on their man down. They got some work in on their long stick faceoffs. We saw, again, lots of young players contribute, and they are, uh, but being led by their seniors and, and Parker and Aiden. So I'm, I'm really excited to see what, what we get here. 
Off the end of the stick here of Reese Washington has a chance to track it down, and he does. Great ground ball. Look at that body control by Reese. Again, the, the Jags run a couple cutters through, and then they're looking for a, um, a an overpass, that's called, or a skip pass to the top for a shot. And if Reese continues to shoot like that, he is going to hit some more of those. Nothing here. Let's keep moving it. That's it. Hunter, draw. Good. I feel very comfortable as an offensive coach when Reese has the ball and is looking to pass. Rinquist shot. Looked like a save there off the stick of Selkin. The man up for Jefferson is over. It was just a one-minute man up. Well, he, that shot really exhibits one of R Cody's real strong abilities, which is his release is so rapid. He decides to shoot it, and it's gone. Okay? We talk all the time about um, a few things to be a good shooter. You have good velocity. You have good accuracy. You have a good release point. Okay? And release speed. How quickly does he catch it? Get it out. You know, that, that's, that's one of the real great advantages for um, a strong player. And a rare time when, as that shot goes out of play, a rare time when a lacrosse shot kind of looks like a hockey shot yeah. for a hockey guy. Um, really strong players, and, and Cody is certainly one. I've seen Hunter. Hunter's got a great low. It's called a low to high. You show your stick low, shoot it low, and then the ball rises high. Okay? And quite honestly, you can catch a goalie kind of sneaking and then shoot it over his shoulder. He, the goalie, what I mean by sneaking is he's crouching, he's reading your release point. Hunter's is really good. Aiden has a nice one. Cody has a nice one. A number of them do. So Chaska, offense has been a struggle. They have just had one goal in their first game. They scored on the first possession of this game, but just one goal since then. And we're... All right, we're under, uh, we're in to the fourth quarter here, almost three minutes in. Remember the adjustment we talked about that Jefferson was going to make with Atterbury. They've made it. They are not letting, they're do not making it very hard for Atterbury to get the ball. And then when they do, they're taking, trying to take away his left. Reese has stayed with him, early slide. Oh, the shot deflection, but a save again. Doesn't matter, McCarthy was all over it. That shot at the varsity level here is probably coming at least at 75 miles per hour, okay? So if that's coming that fast, nice clear there by Stone Pair, and Jake can react to the deflection on it, boy, what a nice play. What a nice play. There's the box. You see the referee raise his hand and then will point forward. They've satisfied the get it in requirement. And now Jefferson can work on this fourth quarter clock and work on their offense a little bit more with a comfortable lead here. Let's see if we can, uh, okay, they switched. Boom. Cody Rinquist, great Down. dodge. Oh, he misses the goal just over the bar. No, that was a, a really effective dodge. How quickly he gets to edge, we call it and then he's gone. And we've seen him go left, that time setting up the left, yep. Rob, to go to that mm -hmm. offhand on the right. Underneath, pull it back. And even got to that left hand anyway. Yep. That's coming underneath and fighting his way back up. That, that's something that this offense will allow him to do a lot of. And it will be, well, the more he is, it'll be effective. Gilbert, bad pass. This will roll yeah. out of play. And again, you hear the defense, even there, giving direction to the midfield. Milton, get in. Milton, get in. They don't want a challenge here. They want to get set their team defense. And again, senior goalie gives you that direction. He's not just worried about him. He knows he's going to take care of him. And he gets everyone else where they need to be. Do have a, a penalty here, I believe, on Jefferson. I missed what happened. I did not see it either. It looked to be, it was well after the ball rolled out of play. So I'm not sure. It must have happened away from the action, obviously. If Jefferson touched the ball after it went out of play, that can be a delay of game. You have to leave the ball. 
you're also supposed to have some balls on the sideline so a player can just pick the ball up and go. That must have been it. I think no, that's it. No Jefferson player touched it, uh, but it was a long run for the Chaska player to try to get to it, and I think that's what this penalty is going to be. And, in fact, that one of the assistant coach gave Charlie Gilbert balls to put along the sideline so right who, now. So who's responsible for that, Kevin? Uh, geez, Rob, <laughs> sorry. Who, who, do we hold, who do we hold accountable for this uh, Jaguar penalty? I, I plead the fifth because it's not. I don't know and I don't want to cast aspersions. <laughs> More saying it kind of a, as a, a joking question oh, as you I know, see I know. Charlie Gilbert rolling several balls out there now, but... Uh, I, th I can't remember if the rules require every 10 or every 5. I think it's every 10. And they're supposed to be a few yards off the sideline so no one hurts an angle, uh, ankle running to it. So Chask a man up, but uh, just 7.56 remaining. Chaska led 2-1, to one, Rob, but that seems like a lifetime <laughs> ago in this game. The Jaguars have scored 10 straight, dating back to midway through the first quarter. We talked about the strength of this Jags team, especially early, is going to be their defense, right? Chanhassen, which again, top 10 team, they held to six goals. I think three or four of them were scored in the fourth quarter. Ja uh, the Burnsville held to single digits. Burnsville is a very strong offensive team, and again, Jefferson and Gordy Gombold causes a turnover. Another whistle off the ball, it looked like. Oh, Purple's off sides. Chaska's off sides. You see how they have two guys back, 15 and 32. They sent too many over. Now, the question is whether the officials saw it. Getting back to our point, the strength of this Jefferson team early on is their team defense. And we're seeing that with a Burnsville team that's literally their strength is scoring goals. They have some great shooters. Chan has a team with, again, great offensive players, top 10 team, and now today. Okay, so we're starting to see, um, you know, that happen. And and now we're, I think the Jags are going to put in another freshman at goal. Yeah, that's number 20, Bennett Lindman. And yep. a, a good move here, get... Uh, you know what you have in McCarthy, and so this is a chance here in a, you know, let's say it, one-sided game now for Jefferson with not a lot of time left to get Lindman in there and to get some experience. I think the, the big, it's really important to do that, Josh, and it's also really important right now because Jake is so much a part of what they do, so much a part of their identity in a game where you never want a, an awkward shot to hit a thumb or and something like that. I, I think this makes sense. I mean, I, I love Jake's assertion, like, this is my cage, and it really he's, he's taken that and run with it. But I think this is a smart decision by the coach on what could be a, and hopefully will be a long season for the Jags and a recognition of how important he is to the Jags. And you mentioned the Jaguar defense, six goals allowed against uh, Chan, seven against Burnsville. They're not going to give up double digits, it would appear, in this game. Rob, unless something disastrous would it were to happen here in the final seven minutes. So the Jags are going to have to kill some time off this penalty. They do the really smart thing. You give it to a superior athlete like Cody and just let him run with it. Okay. Now we're even and Jags will play full all even offense. Nice job by Eli. Eli Finish it. Countryman. Yes. yes. So another Jaguar into the scoring column, Eli Countryman with his first goal of the game. And I, it's a 10 goal lead. I, I really, that was a really strong move by Eli. Um, and getting to, again, getting to the defender's edge and got past the defender before the defender managed to get a push to drive him where he had no angle. Again, full speed. Very, you know, runs through that check. Great location on that shot. As a righty, that's a really hard shot. Look at how little angle he has. And puts it right on that lower corner. Really effective shot by Eli. Good job. I believe that's the 
seventh different Jaguar, maybe eighth different Jaguar to score in this game, Rob. If we have a replay of the ground ball work that Owen Baker just showed, we should show it because it was sweet. Look at this catch! Oh, oh what a save by Selkin. That would have been Milton's first varsity goal. What My a great goodness, luck. what a catch by Milton Spears. Just everything but the goal. But one of the things that, that again, you, what's really great about that, nice ground ball work by Jake Nemchek. Look at him go. Great job. Parker Boone, again, hasn't had varsity experience. But here's a goal. Oh, I guess not. Um, but yet had the peace of mind when he caught that ball to look opposite. Milton made a great cut, and Parker saw that. That's a really important important step. This isn't maybe the best pass of Parker Boone's career, but what a no. catch by Spears. But yep. give Selkin credit. That was well done. Well done by him. I bet again, we're talking about a senior who pro was JV two years ago to an eighth grader. All right. That's what we're excited about. Here's a shot. Again, Looking for that first goal, Milton Spears again denied by Selkin. And now Chaska just pushing things maybe a little bit too much there. As, as gives Spears credit, he came back after having that shot uh, saved to gain possession at least for a short time there. Yep. There's that low to high type of delivery. I think the one thing for an eighth grader, I'd like to be a little closer. But, you know, Milton is a really strong player that, that as he continues to age and get stronger, you're going to see that type of shot be more effective for him, kind of like we saw with Reese. Two years ago, Reese takes that shot. That's a difficult. He's worked really hard at his craft, and that's, that's the benefit from that. That's really good. So the foul was on Chaska. Jefferson has it. Parker Boone to the middle. Jensen. Nice can't ground get it ball. Off. It's picked up though by Washington. That's a tough pass to catch and do something with because that 37 guy, that's the pass. There's that's the look. That's the pass. Jensen that time in much better position to shoot thanks to that feed by Hunter Payer. That pass to that crease, it's so much more effective if you can get the goalie and the defense turning back and then seeing that hard pass back into the middle. That's, that's the key. Boom, quick quiver release, and there's the goal. That's a really nice skip pass, back up, finish. You see how the goalie has to honor the skip, get to his pipe, then push off on that left foot and come back. So now 13 to two Jefferson. They've scored the last 12 goals. Is that ball overrun and picked up by the Hawks. Right now I'm looking at the little things that the Jags are doing to stay within structure or not within structure. That man up goal is in structure, right? That's the type of look we want. It shows discipline. It shows I don't need to score. I need us to score. That was great. Uh-oh. Here's a nice dodge and the shot blocked though. Drake uh, Gustafson, I think. Yeah, Drake Gustafson, the junior, got a piece of it. So not just McCarthy, everybody chipping in on the Jaguar defensive squad. Yeah. This looked troublesome, but Gustafson was in the right spot right there. Yep. And when they did get the position, we had a real, what, one of the hardest things for a goalie is that long pass into the wind. And again, this is the first start for our, our freshman goalie. And he made a 45 yard pass on the money. Great to see. Underhanded risky pass toward Parker Boone. Yeah, let's not do that again. Nice ground ball by Charlie Gilbert. I love how he gets it and gets out. You know, he doesn't try and cradle around. He's just, just like, yeah, I'm out. Out meaning just get away from the nearest Chaska player and then 
set things up from there. I'm speaking too much vernacular. You're absolutely right. He gets out of a contested area where there's lots of the Cheska players that could have checked him. Some guys will pick up that ball and kind of wiggle and go back and forth, not decisively. Charlie did a nice job of picking it and decisively clearing the, the scrum. Just over three minutes left until the Jaguars can get win number two officially into that win column. They have really controlled things from about midway through the first quarter on. They have not allowed a Chaska goal. Well, we're about one minute away from the Jaguars having to get the ball into the box and keep it there on offense. So when they have the ball, they will be allowed to clear it. Then they'll have to get it in the box. And once they do, it has to stay in there. And if they step out or the ball exits the box in the last two minutes... They will lose possession and of the ball. And it's important to work on the – it's obviously not a close game here, Rob, but you're going to need to work on that situation later on in closer games. There are so many games, Josh, you're absolutely right, where that is the reason why a team loses, okay, is because literally they don't do that. Oh, that Charlie could have been Charlie Gilbert right in front. He will want that back. Selkin got a piece of it. Watch Gilbert there. Oh. And kept his feet still, Rob, because he did not want to step into that crease. Correct. He was in the right place at the right time, just missed the shot. Kind of like a wide receiver dragging both of those feet along the sideline. But again, that's the first time Charlie has done that in a varsity Minnesota environment. He'll get better the next time. And he's the most important thing is he's in the right place, and Parker saw him. That's what's critical right now. Final 90 seconds, Chaska trying for a late goal, and that's not gonna help their cause, uh, pass out of bounds. And Jefferson might hold Chaska scoreless through the final 44 minutes of this game. That, uh, that will pay tribute to both their goalies and their defense. One of the things, I don't know if you, uh, if we had the mics turned down, I could hear it because I'm here. There was really good, really good talk even when Jake was out. That's important. That means that it's a characteristic of their defense. And there Look you at that go. goal. Parker Boone just emerged I don't know if they're gonna from give the it pile. To are they going to give it to him? No, they get the, they're going to wave it off. Okay. He just emerged from a mass of bodies with it somehow. It's not going to count. It's his second goal that's been disallowed for him today. He Parker is a force of nature, and, and those are the type of gritty goals that you hope to get. But if you can also get that pass to Milton, you can get those type of goals or looks through him as well. It's really nice to have an athlete of his size. There you go. There's Bennett. the first save for Bennett Lindman, and it draws a nice round of applause from the Jaguar fans near us. Nice outlet to fellow freshman. Look at him move up the ball. The ball is transitioning up really effectively. One more possession here for maybe a final goal for Jefferson if they want. Could just run out the remaining time too, but a nice moment here for Lindman in relief. Yep, gets it up. We have great spacing on our clear. He hits him, that was really good. Nice, nice job by him. Jefferson has a wealth of strong goalies. Um, they have... And Lindman, only a freshman. Yep. Got nice, gets it out, gets that really nice long pass to Owen. Baker understands he's got to clear his hands and gets the ball up, up. Difficult to do, just sitting on the sidelines most of the game. And then I like the confidence to go ahead and yep. be aggressive with it. That's the right play. And what a dominating performance from Jefferson. They got behind early after the first four minutes, but literally all Jefferson from there. They score the last 12 goals of the game, Rob, and uh, the 
young but talented Jaguars. You mentioned them trying to continue to improve each game. It's a short season, just 13 games, so you need to see that growth each time out there. And now Jefferson has a two-game winning streak. You know, I think the Jags, we talked about um, having everyone be more comfortable on the varsity field, playing faster, playing together. This was a really effective show by the Jags um, against a, very, a team in Chaska that really wanted to work hard today, get the ground ball, you know, play a lot of offense. And I, I thought the Jags didn't let them do what they wanted. And, and, and that's, that's really a, a good sign is when you can keep your home field and do things your way. Second half highlights, Jefferson outscoring Chaska in the second half, six to nothing. Nice Great job. defensive performance by the Jaguars. As this is Parker Boone with an acrobatic goal. He got a couple disallowed, but he also found the back of the net a couple times, Rob. Huge advantage for the Jags if he continues to play this way. Getting that athletic body, nice pass, nice shot. Graf with the goal there. Making uh, his older brother Ryan proud watching at home. Owen Baker, first of some nice face-off play. Another freshman for Jefferson. This did not count, I believe. Or that one no, did that count. One did. That one did count. It looks similar to one that was disallowed. There's your free clear. Aiden, Aiden with a goal. Backspin. Again, getting to the middle that way, his his shot is good. How many times have you seen that backspin come into play? I, I can't, can't imagine remember. it happened very often. Yep. More strong play from McCarthy there. Cody, being Cody, getting his hands free in good place. Eli Countryman adding. Good job by Eli. That made it 11 to two. Oh, almost Milton, almost. Milton Spears, a couple of opportunities. He'll find the back of the net, I'm sure. Uh, it won't take too much longer for him as you see Jensen scoring there. That's his second, good to hear for Zach Jensen. And then the save there in relief, Lindman getting it done. A total team effort for Jefferson. How many different names did we call here, Rob? I think eight or nine different easily, Jaguars easily. scored. Uh, obviously, defensively, everybody chipped in. This is the kind of performance that Scott Cater is going to uh, look fondly on after the season. You know, this is an exciting year for the Jags, not only just getting to play, which is so yeah. huge, but, you know, grow, develop. This is not a team that is like, you know, last year's team had a realistic goal of trying to make it to the state title, at least a section championship game, but make it to the state tournament. This is a much different team. And and each one is going to have some excitement in being involved with it. This is going to be, let's grow, let's get better. Well, there's going to be some tough days. There are going to be some great days. This is a really good day for so many of the young Jags. So many got to contribute in a big way and some building blocks for the Jaguars being built on a dominating performance 13 to 2. It'll be just exciting to see this team continue as the season goes on. Jefferson moving to 2 and 1. Chaska now 0 and 2 on the year. For our entire crew, for Rob Graff, this is Josh Powers saying good night from Jefferson High School.